Hi, it's Dave. I'm really excited today because I'm going to be showing you how I make my special marinara sauce. Now, this is something that once you've had it, it's so fresh and it's so delicious, you're never going to do canned again. I mean, never. Uh, it's really simple to make and it's something that I want to show you. Now, it's really versatile too because I use this stuff on everything. I use it on my air fryer chicken tenders, uh, the marinara sauce. I do it with the uh, chicken parm. I do it with meatballs. I put this stuff on my zoodles. Uh, vegetable, uh, the vegetable penne pasta or the whole wheat pasta. I do a, uh, a penne a la vodka, which is phenomenal with this, and uh, a margarita pizza even. You can use this on practically anything, and it stores well in the fridge, and it's really not complicated to make at all. So I'm going to go over the ingredients right now with you, and uh, let's put it all together, because like I said, it comes together quick, and it's really simple. Mm, can't wait. Okay, for the ingredients, very, very simple. Uh, first thing I'm going to use is a good quality olive oil. Uh, I like the Lucini olive oil, and uh, I'm going to uh, use a quarter cup of that in a heavy cast iron pot, like a coated Le Creuset pot. The other thing I want to do is, I know you're going to say, holy mackerel, a quarter cup of that fresh uh, garlic that I chopped up earlier. This stuff is amazing, and I know that you think, wow, a quarter cup, that's going to be a lot. Trust me on this one. The other thing is, we're going to add that palm full of fresh basil and uh, parsley. The smell of this is just incredible. So fresh and so good. And I've also got a teaspoon of uh, just uh, some sea salt and some fresh ground black pepper. And I've got three cans of San Marzano's um, peeled tomatoes. I love this brand. I love the tomatoes. I mean, it's just so fresh. You can you can just smell it. As soon as you open the can, you're just like, mm, it's just like it came off the vine. So quickly, first thing we're going to do is get a bowl, and I'm going to set a colander down on top of it, and I'm going to start putting in these tomatoes. And I'm just going to want it to strain as best as it can. All right, while we're straining this, why don't we go over and uh, take care of the oil on the stove. Okay, let's uh, fire up the gas. And I'm going to set that just about to a little bit of a medium-high heat. While I got that going, I am going to add the quarter cup of olive oil. And we're just going to let that heat up. All right. As that's starting to heat up, I'm going to put that, that garlic in there. And I'm just going to spread that around. And what we're going to do is we're just going to wait until it gets kind of a golden color. Shouldn't take any more than you know, two or three minutes. All right, we've been stirring this now for about two or three minutes and uh, it's just starting to turn a little bit of a golden color. So what I want to add to that is I want to add in the um, basil and the parsley. And I'm also going to add in the uh, salt and pepper. Wow, if you could be in the kitchen and take in the, the scent of this, it's incredible. You got to make sure you don't burn the garlic. Uh, you just want it nice and brown like it is. Believe me, burnt garlic is not good. Okay, now that we've got that incorporated a little bit, it's time to take the 
the uh, tomatoes. And what I do with this is I break it kind of with my thumb a little bit. And I break this all up with my hand into the pot. And we're going to leave the juice out for just now, you know, the juice that we strained. But uh, I'm going to break these up by hand. And once we get them all broken up, we're going to stir them up. And we're going to let it slow simmer for about 25 minutes. Now, while this is simmering, I'm going to go over a little bit of a, or while this is, I'm breaking these up, I'm going to go over a little bit of a story with you. Um, I was, I've always been uh, having trouble with my weight. And I see people in this group saying, you know what, should I get the surgery? Should I have lap band? Should I have a uh, sleeve? Should I have a bypass? And they're really not sure what they want, and I suggest that you let the surgeon decide what's best for you. Uh, I was hoping for a sleeve, because in the event the sleeve doesn't work, um, they could always switch over to uh, a bypass. But the lap band just wasn't for me. So anyway, uh, I was getting up close to 400 pounds. It was really bad. And... Uh, I went to see Dr. Tischler, who pretty much saved me, and uh, I explained that I know how to eat healthy. I love eating healthy. It's expensive, but I love it. And my problem is portion control. So he felt that sleeve would be just right for me. So I went with it, and I went through the whole process and everything else that goes along with trying to get the surgery that everybody's freaking out about. Uh, the thing is that on the day of surgery, I was laying there on the bed with the IV hooked up, and I was like, do I really want to do this? I mean, this, there's, no, there's no turning back from this. Um, is this something I really want to do? Am I about to screw up my entire life? And uh, I know a lot of you might have that fear and that question, like, should I just run now? So for the guys and gals out there, that are questioning like I was, um, it's the best decision I made. Uh, I've gone through the puree stage, I've gone through the soft, soft food and the liquid stage, and I'm pretty much on a eat whatever I can tolerate um, diet. But, you know, and I did. I had chicken parm the other night, and I, I did have that whole wheat penne, uh, but everybody's different, and um, we all heal at different rates. But the thing is that my portions are in line. I weigh out my portions and uh, I have between uh, uh, five and eight ounces and that's all I'm allowed. Now if something's more dense then uh, I will um, stop if I'm full and even if I didn't finish my allotted portion I'll still stop. Now here's some pictures that I had of uh, me. Um, this is when uh, I was at a friend's wedding and my knees were killing me, my legs were killing me, my feet were killing me. Um, I couldn't, and I had even trouble getting in off the bathroom, uh, getting it on and off the toilet. And it's, it's not only unhealthy, it's embarrassing. Uh, my liver was covered in fat. Um, I was one step away. Uh, I was pre-diabetic, one step away from full-blown diabetes. And uh, this was just not too long ago. So uh, then I got uh, this picture here of uh, me at, um, at an outing. And I just, I don't know, I'm looking at myself and everyone says, oh, you're supposed to be kind to yourself. But I was just uh, pretty upset with the way I felt and the way I looked. So here's another one. Just being outside, trying to shovel a path for the, uh, um, you know, for the birds or whatever to 
filled the bird feeders. And I'd get winded just doing that. So anyway, um, it's just spurting all over now. Like I said, you got to break this with your thumb first. Otherwise, you're going to be spraying the dogs and cats and your guests, and you don't want to be doing that. So anyway, uh, this surgery saved my life. Um, I'm now within my portions. I still eat good food. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm limited to how much I can eat, and I'm not pushing it. I'm not going to stretch out my stomach. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do anything to hurt myself, but I'm just saying it's, it was the right decision for me. And uh, Dr. Tischler, hands off, and or, or hats off to you. You're an awesome surgeon, and you did a great job. So anyway, uh, I hope that helps you uh, with your decision on whether or not you know, or, or make it less panicky for you when you're in the hospital. Now this looks beautiful. I'm just going to uh, stir this up, and then we're going to let it sit. And I'm going to let it slow simmer with a lid on for about uh, 25 minutes, and then we will be back. Okay, it's been 25 minutes. Let's see what we got. Ready for this? Oh, man. That's a 25 minute marker. Okay, what we're going to do, folks, is we're going to grab all that strained uh, tomato juice that we, well, the juice that we strained out. We're just going to add that in. All that golden deliciousness. Mm. Oh, man. You are not going to, you're just not going to believe this when you taste it. And the video, I'm sure, just doesn't do it justice. This is so amazing. Now I'm going to take a quick, I'm going to take a quick little taste. I'm curious. Oh, <laughs> holy mackerel! Okay, um, yeah, that is good. Good, good, good. Okay, we're going to bring it up to a boil, and once it boils, we're going to shut it down and just let it warm to room, or cool to room temperature. At that point, we can jar it up, and uh, wow, that is so good. Um, wow, that's, that's all I can say. I mean, when I say incredible, I mean incredible. This is amazing. All right, so let's get this to a boil, and uh, I'll be back once it's all set. I mean, just take a look at that. Look how thick it is. And, wow. So fresh. can't even tell you how good that is. So anyway, I hope you try it. And um, like I said, I, I put it on top of chicken parm. I put it on, uh, I mix it in. I don't need a lot of pasta. If I do, it's whole wheat. It's just a little bit, maybe about a little less than a cup. But, um, and that's just a treat, like once every two weeks, I'm gonna do that. But uh, on the chicken parm, the baked chicken parm, the baked tenders, um, you spoon some of this over zoodles and uh, the zucchini noodles. And I, I mean, you can put this on anything. You can put it on broccoli. You could, it is just so amazing. You have to try it. So. I know I went on quite the rant about how delicious that is, but I mean, you, words can't describe it. You really have to try it. It's, it's so easy, so fresh, so amazing. It's just so good and it goes on everything so anyway you let it cool and then you put it in these mason jars <coughs> i got a vacuum sealer that i seal it up with but um 
You can jar it if you want, or you can just leave it. If you're going to use it uh, a lot, you can just leave it in the fridge uh, with a screw cap on it. But uh, I, I hope that this helped you. I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, let me know what you think of it. And, uh, and I hope that I alleviate some of your fears if you're questioning whether or not you should get the surgery or not. I mean, you saw the pictures of me. I was, I was on death's door practically. I mean, I, I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. And uh, I've still got a long ways to go. I just had the surgery, uh, let's see, just uh, middle of October of 2020. And this is now the middle of December or close to the middle of December. And since the pre-op diet until now, I mean, I've lost about 86 pounds. And that's eating as directed by the nutritionist, but also now that I'm on my own food, uh, just portion control. So, and, and not eating bad, bad things. So anyway, I hope it helps. And uh, I gotta go back in and make another video. And this one's gonna be for uh, air fryer coconut shrimp <laughs> with a, uh, orange marmalade uh, dipping sauce. Uh, it's sugar-free. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it.